If you want to learn After Effects fast, then you're in the right place, because I'm going to teach you everything I can about After Effects in 10 minutes. So when you first open up After Effects, this is what you'll see. You might be overwhelmed, but don't worry, we're going to make this very simple. So to start, we need to import the assets that we're going to use in our animation. So to do this, we can come over to what we call our project panel. Then we can right click and go to import and then click on file. Then once we found the assets that we want to import, we can just click on open. And as you see, they populate in the project panel over on the left hand side here. And if we toggle this open, you can see there are backgrounds and a profile picture. And because we imported a folder, all of these assets are already organized. But let's say we're planning on adding more images to this project and we want to group them with this profile picture. To do that, we need to make a new folder. So I'm going to come down to this little folder icon and click on create new folder. And I will call this images, hit enter, and I will drag my profile picture into the images folder. And then if we toggle down the backgrounds and the images folder, you can see we have all of our assets neatly organized. Now we need to create something called a composition. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to drag a background layer onto what we call our timeline down here. Our background shows up in the timeline here and we can see it visually in the composition window above. Next I'm going to drag our profile picture on top of our background layer here so make sure that it's above it and you'll see that it shows up here in our composition as well. Now another way you can do this is by simply dragging the profile picture onto the composition. Now when you do this it might not be aligned to the center of your composition so what you need to do is come over to this align panel here, toggle it open, and then click on align horizontally and align vertically. And now it's in the center. But let's say we want to move this image in our composition. Well, we can either click it and drag it like I'm doing here, or we can open up what we call our properties. And we can do this by coming down to our timeline, clicking this arrow to twirl it down, and then clicking the arrow next to transform. And now you can see a bunch of properties below. To change where your image is located on your composition, all you have to do is drag the position property properties to move it around. The scale property makes it bigger or smaller. We can also rotate our image by using the rotation property and lower the opacity. But let's say we want to animate this. So let's say we want to have our image start off the screen and then it animates up so that it's in the middle of the screen here. And we can do this with something called keyframing. Let me show you what I mean. So if I come down to my timeline here and I click on my playhead, which is this little blue arrow with a line coming down and I drag this playhead over to about three seconds, let's say at three seconds, seconds is where I want my animation to stop. And this is where I want my face to be in the center of the screen. So I will set a keyframe by clicking on this little stopwatch icon by the position property. And this will set the position of my image to the center at this point on my timeline. Then I'm going to click on my playhead again and drag it to the beginning of my timeline and set another keyframe by coming to the left of this stopwatch icon and clicking on the keyframe icon. And this adds another keyframe at the start of our animation. But at the start, I want the image to be off the screen. So what I'm going to do is drag the second position value to the right until the image is off the screen. Then if I play this back by clicking on our timeline and hitting the space bar, you can see that we have a pretty boring animation where it slides up into the middle. To make this a little less boring, you can do something called keyframe easing. First, select both of your keyframes and then right click on one of them, go to keyframe assistant and click on easy ease. Now, if we play this back, you can see it starts slow, goes a little faster, and then ends a little slower. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It eases your transition between the different keyframes. But we can make it even smoother using something called the graph editor. And I'm just going to show you the basic function here. But if I select both of our keyframes and then come to this little icon and click on it, we see the graph editor. Now, if you don't see something like this, you need to come down to this little icon right here to change your graph type and make sure that the edit speed graph is enabled. Then let's click on this curved line and you see these two little handles show up here. If I drag this handle on the right all the way to the left, you'll see that we have a super fast start, but then it slows down at the end and we have a really smooth ending. So it goes from this to this. And you can drag these handles to play around with these speeds as much as you would like. So now that I've done that, let's exit out of the graph editor by clicking on it again and come back to our main timeline screen here. As you can probably already tell, there's a lot of keyframes that go into a good animation. And because of that, we want to make sure that we have some basic keyboard shortcuts down. The first one is position, which is what we just changed. If I press P on the keyboard, then we can see those keyframes that we just made for our position property. If we want to close this, we can press P again, or we can press 
U. Then we have S for scale, and this opens up your scale property. So let's say at this point, I want it to be 100 scale, and a little bit after the position animation ends, we want to set another keyframe where we scale up a little bit. And then I'll hover over these two keyframes, and the shortcut for easy ease is F9. I have it set to Fn plus F9, but this allows you to apply the easy ease without right clicking, going to keyframe assistant, and clicking on easy ease. Then I'll come into the graph editor, and I'll just move these a little bit so that we have a bit of a smoother animation here. And I will exit the graph editor, and now if we play this back, we have a cool animation where it zooms up and then it zooms in. The next shortcut is R, and that opens the rotation value, which allows you to rotate your image. And finally, we have T, which allows you to change the opacity. If you want to open all of them at once, you can hold Command or Control on Windows and click on the arrow, and that opens all of your properties at once. So this animation is already pretty cool, but I want to add some text on the screen to add some context. To do this, I will come up to this T icon, which is the type tool, and I will click on our composition. Then I'm going to type profile, picture. And once we do that, we're going to scroll down to our align panel and click on the align horizontally and align vertically. But this text is lame, so I'm going to make it cooler. Let's hit V on our keyboard to select the selection tool, which you can also find up here in the toolbar. And then let's click on our text and use the S shortcut that we covered earlier and raise the scale by dragging to the right until it fills our screen. And I don't really like this font, so I'm gonna double click on this and change our text here. I'm gonna change it to Playfair Display. Then I'll click on our selection tool in the toolbar here and I'm going to drag our profile picture text below our profile picture so that when we play it back, you see it and then our image covers the text. You can also toggle open the text layer like you do with any image layer and change the scale properties, the position properties, and apply keyframes to it just like you would to an image layer. But something else that you can do with text that you can't do with an image is animate it. So if I click this little animate icon, you'll see we have a bunch of options. Now let's say I want each letter of our text to appear. All I have to do is come to opacity, and then set the opacity to zero. Then open your range selector, come to the start of your timeline, click the stopwatch icon to add a keyframe at the start, and then drag your playhead to where you want your text to be fully visible and set the start value to 100. And if we drag our playhead to the start again, hit space to play this back, now we have our text popping up letter by letter and then it's covered by our profile picture here. And there are so many different animations you can do with this. This was just an example to get you started. Now let's say we want to add some more effects to our composition. All we have to do is come up to effects and presets, click on that. Now I'm only going to show you how to use one of these effects, but if you toggle these down, you can see there are almost too many effects that you will never use every single one of them. If you need to find a specific effect, you can search for it in this search bar. I'm going to search for CC bend it. And then I can drag this on to our layer on our composition or our layer on our timeline to apply it. And as you can see, it screws up my image here, but that's what I wanted. So let me show you why I did that. If you come up to the top left where our project panel used to be, now we see an effect controls panel show up. Don't worry, you can go back to your project panel right here on the left if you need, or go back to your effect controls panel. And you can see that our effect, the CC bend it effect, has now shown up. And let me show you what I'm gonna do with this. So I'm gonna come to the start of our timeline, I'm going to toggle a keyframe at the start, and I'm gonna change the value to negative 10. Then I'm gonna come to the end where my face is in the middle, and I'm gonna change this value to 10, and it will automatically apply a keyframe at this position. To show you what I mean, let's hold Command or Control and toggle down this image to see all the effects. And here we see the CC Bend It effect with the two keyframes. Play this back. You can see we have this kind of goofy animation where it's bending to the left and then it bends to the right. So that is the effects panel. You should dive into that and see what you can make with some of those. There's some really fun stuff in there. Now I'm gonna twirl this back up and I'm gonna show you how you can combine these layers into a new composition so that you can duplicate it and reuse it if you want. Once I have selected all of these layers by clicking on one and holding shift and clicking on another, we can right click and then go to pre-compose. We will name it PFP, then hit OK. And as you can see, these layers have been merged into one composition, which means I can copy this and paste it and have another version of it. So if I open up the scale and scale this down, you can see we have two different versions of it here and maybe change the lightness of the layer below. And if we want, we can double click on either of these pre-compositions to open it up and that will open up another tab here called PFP. And if we make any changes in this tab, 
let's say we delete the text, then we come back to our, our main composition here, then you can see that the text is deleted on both pre-comps. So pre-comps are great if you want to reuse assets a lot of different times. Great, so now we have a completed animation and we need to export it. And we can do this by coming up to File, going down to Export, and then we have a few options. I'm gonna use the second one here and click Add to Render Queue. Then you get a new tab, you can change the render settings, you can change the output module by clicking on this, but we're just gonna keep these the same. And then you can choose your save location here. I will save it to my exports. You can change the name of your file. I'll change it to wiggle profile picture and then hit save. Then all you have to do is hit render, or like I said, you can queue it in the media encoder if you want to compress those files a little bit more. But let's just hit render and watch it go to work. And after only a few seconds, it's ready. And if we come to our folder here, you can see our file is saved. And if we play it back, we have our animation. So that's all we have time for. But if you got through this video, you're already on a great path to learning After Effects. I hope this was helpful for you. If you want to download After Effects, then there's a link to a free trial in the description box below. If you learned a lot about After Effects, but you haven't learned Premiere Pro yet, then you might want to check out this video where I teach you Premiere Pro in 10 minutes.